You know, I, I finished reading last night John Meachin's book, Destiny and Power. You're prominently featured in that book. And I think very well. I mean, you come across very well. I didn't know you were such a, you were really kind of like that conservative bird over the president's shoulder regarding Kuwait, regarding staying tough and, and being, not, I wouldn't say belligerent, but not being unyielding. Um, I was thinking in 1992, sir, as well. That was a year in which I guess you and, and, and President Bush Sr. probably thought you were unbeatable going into that year, right? And this, this guy who plays second in New Hampshire was going nowhere. Yeah. Well, what did us in in 92 was Ross Perot. Yeah. And you know, I was one that said, look, he's not going to run. At the very end of the day, he's, he's not going to participate. And at the end of the day, I was wrong. He did run. I, I, I argued, Meacham I, argues I, in his book that there's an argument to be made that, he, that Perot cut from both Bush Sr. And, and Bill Clinton. You don't buy that. Well, I'm sure he had some votes from right, Clinton, right. But, but the great majority came from us. He got 19% of the vote. He's a businessman from the state of Texas and a Republican. So who do you think he took the most votes from? Well, by, it's by, it's by, a Bill Clinton. By, and Bill Clinton got by, elected by, 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 with less than 50%. Yeah, yeah. By, by far he took uh, more, okay. more from us. But uh, no, you, you don't really know. These polls are all over, over the place. But clearly he took uh, from us. Uh, one of the things that I tried to do that was unsuccessful, I don't know if it's in the book or not, I wanted to keep Perot out of those debates uh, because in the debates it was going to be two against one. And for whatever reason, we were unable to do that. I think that you were also, uh, if, if the book is to be believed, and I, you know, I think Meachin's a pretty good historian and he gets a lot right, that you were concerned that the administration was losing focus. Um, and you could apply that to economic matters, you could apply that if the, if the Iraq war dragged on, the first Iraq war. But that you, you got a lot of things right. But I, I also read in 1992 that there was talk that he would dump you as his running mate and that they ultimately decided not to. How much truth was there to that? You always hear that JFK was going to dump LBJ. You know, Nixon was prepared to dump Agnew. Um, of course, Agnew left <laughs> different devices. Yeah. But was there pressure? And, and, and 43 was going to dump Cheney. It sort of, goes, right. sort of goes with the territory. Um, did anyone ever talk to you, Dan? Mr. Vice right President, does it look good? No, I had I had a number of conversations with the president, and he yeah. knew full well I'd do whatever he wanted, and he never showed any inclination to make a change. So you you stay the course. We were a good team. We won in 1988 when a lot of people didn't think we would. We were down 22 points in the polls. We we were down big time going into that convention in 1988, and we came back and won by five points, I think. Something you know, like we always that. remember iconic <clears throat> images, uh, and I think of that debate you have with Lloyd Benson. And you were using your ample background set because unlike a lot of these untested candidates, you did have a pretty long resume and, and long experience. And you properly seized on the John Kennedy comparison to which he seized on. I knew John Kennedy, John Kennedy was a friend of mine. You know John Kennedy. How much did you resent that? How much today? I know it's been decades, look, look, do you resent that? No, it, 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 was, it was well rehearsed. Uh, he was going to use. He was it. ready for. He it, was going to use it. You know, we, we. I didn't know that he was going to use it. Afterwards, I found out. You know how rehearsed it really was, and it was a good line on his part. Uh, did you and, say and, there? You know, but it was. A, it was. A, it was. You know, it was a good line on his part, but did, didn't matter in the, in the end result. As a matter of fact, the look at the uh, debate itself and the substance of the debate. Uh, I think we did very well. Zero. It mattered. We, we did we, well. We but did, you know, the lines well because matter, I, right? Because I talked about Dukakis. Uh, yeah. I talked about what kind of a president he would be and how... And by the way, a number of polls said you won that debate. Yeah. That gets I mean, talked about. Yeah. So, I mean, but, it's but, just one... But you know what it reminded me of, line. Vice President, that we remember lines from debates. And now that I'm an experienced moderator, as you know, oh, I think yeah. I'm an expert. You'll be on the presidential debate. So, please, yeah. enough. This go. isn't about yeah. me, but back to oh, me. Oh, yes, it is. Talking to you. What do you mean it's not about <laughs> you? Of course it is, Neil. But here's You're a news <laughs> But here's what I began to wonder. How much importance do we put in the zingers, in the lines, like Benson's, like Reagan's, you know, I'm not going to hold my opponent's youth and experience against him, or Reagan saying, there you go again, or, you know, we always cling to these lines and, and, and assign some value to them. In the scheme of things, did it make a difference? Because all the candidates now, when they debate, I'm focusing on the Republican side, they all try to come up with their zingers. I, I, I think it, it matters how much, I don't know. I think people are a lot smarter than you give them credit uh, for because they're looking for substance. They're looking about, okay, what is he going to do? 
if he's president of the United States? What, what is he really going to do uh, combating ISIS? What is he really going to do about job creation? They're really interested in that. Clever lines, oh, okay, that was a clever line. Right. But they get beyond that. They really do. You know, John uh, Kennedy had said after his debate, it, the crucial thing, he, he thought he proved, and I guess in retrospect he did, could they picture me being president? Um, you put those doubts to rest. Yes, we could picture this guy being president someday. So that's part of it, right? But, but what if other things interfere? In other words, what if the love affair we have for these outside-the-box candidates, like a, a Donald Trump or Ben Carson, who's running into a heap of controversy, people start saying, you know, I, I can't see that guy being president. Well, but, they, when's that turning point? Well, look, people start voting. Uh, right now, pollsters call up, and you guys are, you know, totally immersed in all this polling that goes on. No, you're watching CNN. Yeah. We never, we don't, we don't yeah, obsess yeah, 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 Could you give me those 17 polls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all this polling right. stuff. But people, you know, say what is literally on their mind. Ha they haven't really thought about voting for a president. And they're not in the digital age, are they? They're calling landline phones. Well, the landline phones yeah. are, you know, that's not the younger people. Those right. 40 and under all use, don't have landline phones anymore, and they do vote. Maybe not as much as those are 40 and older. But, you know, polls are polls. And when, they, when you start voting, you're going to sort this thing out. And at the very end, people are going to you know, have to pass that threshold test. Is he or her really capable of being commander-in-chief?